Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So, uh, yeah, that just happened. Bungie really did just drop a teaser for the final shape out of nowhere. I'm gonna go ahead and let you all know that, yeah, the thumbnail is the way it is because if Bungie is literally throwing this out there in front of your faces, I do not consider it a spoiler. So yeah, terribly sorry if you're on the no spoilers train, but consider this a little bit like when Cade died in Forsaken. You couldn't get away from that one either, they put it out in front of all of you three to see. So yeah, good luck with that, but I imagine that you're going to be very mad at just about everybody, not just me. Today though, we're going to be going over that teaser and we're going to talk about what's really going on and we're going to dive into some wild speculation because right now, that's all we really have. It's a lot to cover from such a small bit of content, but I think all of you will see that the whole thing is worth your time just to even think about because the possibilities here are wild. As a quick note, going forward, we're being sponsored by Apex Gaming PCs, and they value your time, so I'm allowed to make their ad reads short and sweet. So here it is. Now that we're sponsored with them, you can get great gaming PCs for both gaming and content creation. If you're looking to pick up a new PC, you can get 5% off of that and anything else in their store using my code down below in the description. I have a custom line of PCs with them. This line includes the Captain, Baron, and Kel. Three variations, three levels of power, and yes, I named them myself because I'm a nerd and it had to be lore stuff. And you can check them out at the link in the description. Nice and simple, way less hassle than building a PC yourself, and it'll be a great gaming PC because it's Apex. Thank you again to them for sponsoring this video. Okay, so quick sponsor read over. Here is the trailer in full. I don't even know where to begin. You've missed so much. We've slain gods. Vanquish nightmares. Fought alongside those who we once fought against. I wish you could have been there. Yeah, me too, kiddo. But hey, I'm here now. Wherever the hell here is. So, there's a lot to unpack in that trailer, but the vast majority of it comes from the last 20 seconds or so. Obviously, before that, we see Guardians facing off against some of the principal threats of the last two years, namely Savathun and Nezarek. We see us united with Kaitol and Mithrax. We see a whole fire team standing there in the well of radiance of a warlock. All of this, however, is followed up by the really important bit, which of course is the reveal of Cade. Yes, that Cade. Again, did you think I was kidding about spoilers? We are talking about this. It is going to be the main topic of discussion. This is your final warning. Get out of there. All that said, let's talk about the stuff that is not so obviously out of place with this trailer before we talk about the really big thing, which of course is, I mean, Cade's back. He pulled a Gandalf the White, you know? Like, let's, let's leave that for the end because it really is the biggest piece of it all. Starting off with, we can see the Ace of Spades that Case is holding is cracked and filled with what looks like either some intense kind of light or taken energy. It's very hard to see, purely because of the fact that when you look at Cade, it's really not clear. I personally do not know which it is. I think that it's more likely going to be light, but even so, there is no easy way of telling. Whatever it is, it's also seemingly radiating from his eyes and mouth. It's a bit hard to tell, but if you look closely, you can see it there. And it is different from what Cade was like before, because his eyes were this very, very deep blue prior to all of this. So it is different, as best I can tell. What I will say is that this either light or taken energy, whatever the source of the radiance in Cade is, it's going to make for a fascinating story, because both kinds of energy provide interesting story beats. If it is light, then it seems to hold true about some idea of the Traveler communicating within the moments of death. If you want to go ahead and look really prominently at that, I suggest you read through the journals of Clovis Bray the First. They have three moments at which he thinks the Witness, or Clarity, is contacting him when he has died, and he is in the moments before he's resuscitated and in that moment of death. That is actually not Clarity, or the darkness, or the witness, or whatever you have. It is in fact the Traveler trying to warn Clovis about all of this stuff. 
and, well, it kind of indicates that the Traveler communicates within those moments of death. It seems to indicate that perhaps there is a perspective here of what happens when Guardians have passed on and died their final death. If this is instead taken energy, then we know this is something that's kind of tied to the Witness and potentially what it's done to the Traveler. All of that might be well explained partly by all of this, and I would look to what's happening in the current season for that to be relevant. However, again, I think this is much more likely to be light energy because it doesn't have that same kind of menacing white and black radiance, you know? There's that kind of negative shadow that comes with a lot of taken energy, and I don't think Cade is quite there. Of course, our next shot is even more important in this regard because as Cade says, wherever the hell here is, we get that landscape shot of green hills and a portal that is very similar to the one that we see in the side of the Traveler. It's just there sitting in the sky, and here is where the rampant speculation really begins. Because yes, that is similar to the one that's sitting in the side of the Traveler that the Witness drew at the end of Lightfall, and from there we have all sorts of possibilities. The biggest one is that at current, we are looking at what the view is like from inside the Traveler. That's the thing that at least a lot of people have been hinting to. This may be its pale heart, something that the Witness supposedly linked to. But again, we don't know. None of this is confirmed. It might make sense that inside the Traveler, a device or being that is very much concerned with the spreading of life, there is a verdant paradise that is filled with greenery and all this other lovely landscaping. But all of that aside, that's not the only theory that exists. There are other theories that this portal is leading to the garden before time where the gardener and the winnower first fought. That's to do with some of Destiny's creation myths. If so, then this place is not so much a somewhere as it is a some when. A place before time that is so primordial and unknown to all of us that Cade is absolutely correct to ask that question. And then there are theories that this portal is simply leading to a critical time or place when the Witness's plans need to unfold in order for the Traveler to lose. A moment of weakness that might allow the Witness to gain influence over the future of the entire universe. None of this is confirmed. We do not know what the situation is and I would ask you all to keep that in mind because there are going to be people out there who inevitably claim it's one thing or the other. Lord knows, in various other videos, if I've believed a bit of theory is very conclusive, I've gone for that. But here in this moment, I'm going to emphasize the fact that nobody truly knows anything. No matter what the reality of the situation is, we can go ahead and we can speculate on it, but it's just worth remembering that in this moment we should keep an open mind. And now, let's go ahead and talk about the big one. The fact that Cade is still alive. But how? I need to start by saying the obvious bit, which is that again, the only thing people have is speculation. To give you an idea of how out of left field all of this is, I've seen theories in the like last 24 hours on the internet that range from anything of this being an alternate reality version of Cade, to it being a different timeline, to it being the fate of all guardians who suffer a final death, to it being one of the many rezzed copies of Cade that our ghost pulls from when they resurrect us. Yeah, there are tens of thousands of different tiny lore theories out there. Some of them seem to make more sense than others. Some of them are really out there, and nobody knows anything truly about this. And if they tell you otherwise, uh, well, I would love some of their powers of prophecy. Or at very least, the power to read if I missed something. What I can tell you is this. Cade shows a degree of familiarity with Ikora, as does she with him. Regardless of whether that makes this the Cade we always knew, or a close copy of Cade from another timeline, that familiarity is the one thing that I think we can take for granted in this moment. Cade will know us again. Meanwhile, there is something else that is worth pointing out. Cade does not have his ghost Sundance here, and I think that that choice is very deliberate, contrasted with Ikora, who does have her ghost, Aphiacus, floating next to her. Cade missing Sundance tells us that yes, Cade is indeed dead, but somehow alive again. Whether this is just Cade in another life or not, it's too early to confirm, but Sundance is not in the picture, which does seem to push us towards the idea that this is indeed our Cade, who is somehow dead and yet risen. Again, we do not know enough to confirm anything, and it would be foolish to confirm anything 
but I think there is a heavy possibility that this is something which runs with the idea of Guardians existing after death. And the reason I say that, and knowing that again it is speculative above all else, is that, well, we've explored this idea before. Take a look at the corridors of time. We found our own grave, and were able to pull on the various threads of time to pull Bastion back into our timeline. So, yeah, there is no easy way of telling what happens when a Guardian suffers a final death. But again, we just don't know at this point. The internet is full of weird speculation and theory, and damn it, Bungie, you've pulled me in again. We'll need to wait and see what the situation really is, but man, what an intriguing tease. For those of you who are sitting here and wondering more about the final shape, there will, of course, be a reveal at the very end of the season of The Deep by the looks of things. If memory serves me correctly, that is late August, so you can sit around and look out for that. That's going to be good fun. And it's worth remembering as well that that is not the only thing that was revealed at the Sony showcase just yesterday. There is also something rather spectacular that I am going to cover, and I am incredibly excited to cover. I am going to dedicate the next video to Marathon. Yes, this is what Bungie's codename Matter new IP is. It's not technically a new IP, it is the revival of an old IP, their first-person shooter that truly put them on the map. I'm not even talking about Halo. This was back in the day when they were able to sit there and use Marathon as a launching platform to get themselves into a partnership with Microsoft. This was also a game that is responsible for a variety of firsts, and it's a classic. I will be talking about this in a dedicated sense in the next video because this universe Man, it has some really cool ideas and some awesome lore, and I am standing on the shoulders of giants just by telling it to you because this is a community that has existed for over 30 years, telling stories and trying to understand the narrative of their game. Do you know what? Kudos to every single one of them. I'm so excited to jump in and talk about it. Anyway, that's all from the video for today. Tell me what you thought of the reveal. I am intrigued by all of the Cade possibilities, and you know what? If you have any theories, go ahead and discuss them down below in the comments section. And, of course, if you want any more Destiny lore content, and marathon content for that matter, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe. Our next video will be on marathon. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, also go ahead and leave a like. But, as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.